All right, guys, so welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all doing great. Today, we have yet another fusion champion to go over. We're just coming off of the Helicath fusion, so a lot of your resources are pretty tight. What I wanna do in this video is basically give you the information so you can decide on if this guy is worth you going for or not. For me personally, my main account, I'm in a spot where I think it's worth it. I don't, I'm not super tight on resources, and this dude seems like he's gonna be quite a bit of fun on arena defense, so as an end game player, I'm still gonna find some value in this champion. But once we get through this, hopefully you guys can decide if he's worth you going for or if you should just sit out on it, okay? So that's gonna be something for you to decide on each of your account. This video is not gonna be so much trying out a bunch of different builds. If you guys wanna see anything specific tested, if you wanna see any specific build, specific, um, I guess, functionality of something, maybe a mastery, how skills work, let me know down below. This is the test server, so I do have basically unlimited resources, so I can do that. But today, I'm gonna talk to you guys about kind of what I've learned about him over the last few hours of testing on him, and hopefully you guys can decide from there if he's worth you going for or not. So I'm gonna give a quick overview of his skills. His A1 attacks one enemy two times, instantly activates any HP burn debuffs on the target after attacking. Now the only downside to this ability is it's difficult to keep HP burns up because he's constantly activating them, as you can imagine. His A2 ability attacks all enemies 75%, books up to 100% chance of placing HP burn on all enemies for two turns. This debuff cannot be resisted. Now it can weak it. So if your idea was to take him into Spire Stage 25, it is magic affinity, so it can weak hit, which if it weak hits, it can't place a debuff whatsoever. His A3 is a very interesting ability. It equalizes HP of all allies. Basically, if you have a champion with 100% HP and a champion with 1% HP, it's going to bring the champion with 1% HP up to 100% HP. It's a very interesting ability. I really like it quite a bit. Honestly, I'm going to show you guys in a little bit kind of how it works and give you a brief overview on kind of what I found with this champion. But if this champion has more HP than the enemy, this skill is going to ignore 30% of the enemy's defense, which is crazy. But if he has less HP than the target, then the cooldown of Exalted Pyre is going to be reduced by one turn. So it's definitely a very interesting skill kit. This ability has a lot of text to read, and it may sound a little bit confusing, possibly with the equalize the HP part, but it doesn't seem to really equalize it. When I heard equalize at first, I was thinking it would average it. So if you have 100% and 1%, it would take all champions to 50%. But it doesn't seem to do that. And let's talk about his passive. So there was a lot of speculation on if this would work like Geomancer's passive, reflecting back with Warmaster and Giant Slayer. It doesn't work like that, at least not from what I've tested. But it does have a very unique effect that I think is incredible. So reflects 30% of the damage this champion receives back to the attacker if this champion has 50% HP or more. So it's a unique condition. You do have to make sure he's above 50% if you want this ability to work, of course. But if he's below 50% HP, then deals 30% more damage instead if this champion has less than 50% HP. So this ability is very unique. I'm going to get into why it's unique in just a second. But if you look at my build, right now the build that I have is a HP heavy build because he's an HP based champion. All of his damage is based on HP. So I have the HP pretty high. I have, I have him in lethal gear, so some extra defense ignore, and I have him pretty high crit damage. Now, if you're going to build him, if you're an early game player, a mid game player, this is not the build I would go. If, so if you're a newer player looking to build him, honestly, I would just focus on HP, defense, and speed. If you can get crit rate, get it. If not, it's not even that big of a deal. But if you can get to 100% crit rate, it's going to make a significant impact on that passive ability. We'll get into that more in just a minute. But accuracy, don't even need it. He's a very easy champion to build, but he could also be very stat demanding in my opinion as well. Now, masteries, this is very much going to depend on where you're going to use him. For me, I just threw on this one because his passive has a unique effect with this mastery specifically. So I figured, hey, let's get some more crit damage and make the passive work even better. So the place that I've been testing this guy out the most has been the arena. So we can come over here and look at my battle log and you can see that I've been attacking pretty consistently for the past probably three or four hours, okay? I've been trying a lot of different things. And the thing that I've found that's so interesting about this guy is a lot of these champions, I can't attack YST yet. Sorry, YST, man. I've been, I've been hitting your team a lot because you actually have a damage dealer on there and it makes it easier to test. But a lot of these reflect damage champions like Warchief, it reflects a pitiful amount of damage. But with this champion, it actually reflects base and it can crit on the reflect, okay? So not only can it crit on the reflect, but it scales with crit damage. I've had reflex that send back more damage than the person hits me with. Let me go up here 
and try to hit a team like this, okay? Just for an example, now this team in here right now is not at all the team you'd have to use. This is just an example of a team that I'm using. And honestly, I think this guy may possibly start showing up in some actual defensive teams, okay? Possibly some arena meta teams because his kit's just so interesting. Watch this Kandrafon. See if he hits him very hard. If he does, if he doesn't weak hit, he very well might die, okay? So he got hit for 13,000 damage. He hit my Walking Tomb Dring for I don't know how much damage, but he got 13,000 damage reflected back to him. Walking Tomb Dring is perfectly fine. No issue whatsoever. Now, when we get back to him, I got to be careful. Well, he's provoked, so I can't actually see the A3 and how much it actually heals, but it's a very good ability. So talking about him being on arena defense, potentially, he has an amazing reflect that scales with damage. He actually hits fairly hard on his A3. His A1 and his A2 don't really hit that hard. They're not terrible, but it's not great either. So here's the thing I really want to showcase as well. Dang it, I'm actually locked out, so I can't really showcase it, unfortunately. I'll showcase it in a few minutes with a champion. I can I know for sure can showcase it if we need to do that. But let's see if I can hit YST, see if we're off cooldown. There we go, perfect. So his Ginzen, watch this, okay? S pay attention to what happens to Ginzen. This is very, very interesting. I think this is an awesome mechanic that they've added to the game. So Ginzen attacks Dring. Well, doesn't actually solo attack Dring, but... He almost dies, okay? Gets so close to dying. I'm not sure exactly why it didn't kill him that time. Before, each time was actually killing him. But, basically, if you gear this guy with a lot of crit damage, then he's going to reflect all the damage back and kill people. Kill people flat out. 50,000 damage on that A3 ability. Crazy amount of damage. Now, one thing to keep in mind is with that passive ability, crit damage does scale it, but Savage Gear, Lethal Gear, Helm Smasher does not scale it. Not that I'm aware, okay? I've tested out, I've tested this a lot and all those things, I haven't noticed I'm actually scaling it, but more crit damage does scale it. So I've pushed up quite a bit of crit damage. The reason why I have him in lethal gear though is because on his A3 ability, the defense ignore does kick in and it does matter. So I wanted to get some more defense ignore when he uses that A3 ability. So I went ahead and threw him in lethal gear, but I very well may change up the gear later on down the road. Maybe I don't want that much crit damage, but it's definitely worth playing around with and testing out a few different things. So let me see if I can find some other teams. Um, there was a, I think Scratch had a pretty uh, aggressive team set up. Let me see if I can find his team real quick. Uh, but definitely very interesting. Okay, so he has a Leoris and a Hegemon. This is definitely a very interesting team. And I want to show you guys that I really think this guy is going to be part of some arena defenses. Let me know if you have anything interesting in mind that you're thinking about. Let's put it to one time speed. Honestly, against Nuke Hegemons, this dude would just erase him. If a Hegemon nuked into this guy, this dude's going to reflect so much damage back. The Hegemon's most definitely going to die. So let's try to ally attack with Necrit. Watch the Leoris do his attack, okay? Now, the one thing to keep in mind, and the one thing that I've noticed, is that even if... So, like, if this guy gets hit and gets b brought below 50% in one hit, then it doesn't actually reflect any of the damage back because in instead of being calculated... Before the hit, if he's above 50% HP, it seems to be calculated after the hit if he's above 50% HP. So that reflect on Leoris, it is mitigated by the increased defense. Once again, another, another thing that's not great, but it is very interesting to see all the damage get reflected. So here, Leoris is going to attack again. Hopefully, we get a decent reflex. So 18,000 and like 16,000 damage reflected back. Vogoth is going to be healing Dring up. So it's just a... It's crazy. I, honestly, I like this dude quite a bit for that simple mechanic. I'm hoping that I can get him brought up in HP or brought up in turn meter and not be stunned, not be locked out, so I can actually show you guys how that heal works. Maybe we can kill Kandrafon here or kill Hegemon here. So now watch this heal. Now, well, Vogoth is dead, the one I actually wanted to show you with. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit Siffy, and then I'm going to use Walking Tomb Dring's heal, and hopefully give you guys an example of what happens. So I think Kandrafon's full HP. He should be full HP. And we may get locked out again. If so, not a big deal. We'll just skip over it. Um, maybe we can wake him up. Come on, wake him up maybe. Okay, here. Perfect. Hopefully we don't get the true fear activated. But Necrit's pretty low. Kandrafon's fairly high. So we should just see everybody come up to the equal amount of Kandrafon. Let's hit Hegemon with this hit. Boom. 51,000. Absolutely nuked him. And everybody's equalized on HP. So you can imagine... On arena defense, if you had a pretty tanky team, pretty survivable team, this dude's going to hit hard with his A3 ability, going to have a massive heal, especially if champions like Duchess are in stone skin. They're going to have full HP, essentially. So he might be low, maybe somebody else is low, but he's going to equalize to the highest champion's HP. 
So Everai is basically going to get a full heal. He's going to be reflecting damage. I think there's going to be a lot of interesting teams come out with this guy. But then again, I could very well just be overhyping this guy. But so far, I've been enjoying him. Let's jump into the Doom Tower. Let me give you another example of how this works, okay? So we're going to use another champion that I used earlier, which is, okay, so him. And then we're going to use this guy right here, okay? So this guy has an ability where he reduces his HP to zero, which is good because in this situation, I need to see somebody with zero HP. I'm going to try to do it where I can get back to back two turns. Not for sure if it's going to work or not. Okay, he's just dead. That's all that happens. He just dies. Let me see if I can get Lysandra in there for some turn meter manipulation. There we go. To get them reduced in turn meter just a little bit so he can actually take a turn. Because I want to get his HP to zero, get the unkillable on him, and then equalize all the HP. So we're going to do the AoE there. We're going to get his HP to zero. And then, this is going to be very cool. Honestly, like I said, I thought this was going to be balancing the HP like Sinesha. Sinesha takes everybody's HP, equalizes it, and then heals, I believe. Or averages it and then heals. But he just brings everybody up to where the highest person's at. Watch this, okay? So we're going to use the A3. We're going to hit the person in the back. Everybody's HP is just brought up to the equal amount of Drings, okay? Which is pretty significant. I think he was like 98%, and now everybody else was at 98%. So this guy has some definite utility. Obviously, on a... Let's see how short of a cooldown that ability is. So that ability is on a four-turn cooldown, okay? A four-turn cooldown, I believe five turns before it's being booked, of course. So let's go look real quick, just to make 100% sure. Um, right here, five-turn cooldown, books down to a four-turn cooldown. So he can get around to it pretty quickly. A four-turn cooldown, essentially a full HP heal on possibly your entire party is going to be huge for things like Hydra, things like Clan Boss, possibly if you have a um, non-unkillable team, it could be very good there. Um, it could be obviously very good in the arena if you have champions who can survive. It's going to be great for progressional content if you haven't built pretty fast. The build that I currently have on this guy is definitely not the only build you could go with. There's a lot of different builds. There's a lot of different possibilities with this guy. I think for most players, if he's not going to be like a massive improvement to your account, I think he's going to be a fun champion to play around with. Just because of the fact, going in the arena, there's not very many champions you can throw in the arena and then watch the enemy kill themselves. I love seeing that. I absolutely love seeing that. Now you have champions like Gaius, who's pretty similar. The enemy attacks him, they place bombs on, him, on themselves, and they kill themselves. Very, very similar with this guy. They attack him, he reflects the damage, and they kill himself. Let's see if uh, Leoris kills himself here as well. So he's going to hit. Didn't reflect any damage back. Kind of weird. Or the other thing that I found interesting is if I didn't have Vogoth here, I bet he would have went under 50% HP. That's why he didn't reflect anything back to Leoris. So his reflect is very odd in that sense, the way it's calculated. So I guess it's calculated right after he hits. So like if the Leoris does over 50% damage, it doesn't reflect anything, even though he was above 50% before the hit and after the hit. So it's interesting stuff. Let me see if I can swap out. Um, maybe let's take Vogoth out. I'm, I want to see somebody else who can one shot my Dring or very similar. So there's Genzin again. Let's get rid of Vogoth this time. Let's see, it should be the exact same thing because the Genjin shouldn't be one-shotting or shouldn't be doing too much damage. So if you one-shot Dring, it's not gonna do anything to you, okay? He just counterattacks, kills him, nice. Um, but yeah, so be very careful. The order of events is kind of weird with this champion. So guys, as a champion, I definitely think this guy is gonna is gonna be worth at least considering going for. I think he has a unique enough skill kit and interesting enough and fun enough skill kit it's going to make it worth it for me. So let me know what you guys think down below. Let me know if there's anything you would like to see me test out. Let me know if there's anything like for me to try. I'll definitely be interested in doing it. Like I said, I'm on the test server. So if there's other builds of other champions you want to see, definitely let me know down below. But with that said, guys, thank you all very much for watching. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one.